Hello everyone and welcome again to another installment in Legends of West Indies Cricket on Friday Night Lime here on Cricket 360. Today we'll take a look at Larry Gomes, the 10th in the series of 33 Legends in Alpha Order we'll be looking at over the coming weeks. So far we've looked at in Alpha Order Jimmy Adams, Ambrose, Bishop, Chandrapal, Constantine, Dujon, Federicks. And now we're into the third of the four G's. We've seen Ghana, Gibbs. Now we're doing Gomes. And then next week we'll do Greenwich. To come in alpha order, Hall, Haynes, Headley, Holding. That's the four H's or five H's. Then we have Hunt. Then we're on to Kalicharan, Kanhai, Lara Lloyd, Marshall, Murray. The five R's, Ramadin, Richards, Richardson, Roberts. Row, then on to the uh, greatest of them all, Sobers, Valentine, and then the four W's. Yes, the four W's: Walcott, Walsh, Weeks, and Worrell. So let's get to Larry Gomes, Mister Dependable, Unflappable, and Unassuming. Hillary Larry Angela Gomes was born in July 1953 and grew up with a large sporting family in Arima, including brother Sheldon who represented Trinidad and Tobago at the regional level and Randy who played and captained the Trinidad and Tobago youth team before he migrated to Toronto where he played for many years. Elder brothers Lester and Gregory were also talented cricketers topping the batting and bowling average with Gregory earning the Cricketer of the Year award, following in his brother's footsteps, Sheldon and Larry, who each won the award in two previous years. Not many people in the world can lay claim to having a stadium named in their honor, as is the Larry Gomes Stadium in his hometown, constructed in time for the 2001 Under-17 World Cup, that's football, which was hosted by Trinidad and Tobago. Larry's introduction to international cricket didn't get off to a perfect start. In fact, as a young 14-year-old representing Trinidad and Tobago against Barbados in a goodwill tournament, he scored two ducks and was completely disheartened and discouraged and even contemplated dropping the game right there and then. But his mentor and friend Hugh Henderson convinced him to continue and in the dressing room soon after being out without scoring for the second time they together drafted a list of 10 goals he wanted to achieve in cricket. It is now, now history that Gomes achieved 7 of the 10 goals only missing out in that he never captained the West Indies team. It should be mentioned, however, that he did indeed captain the team for a warm-up game in Australia. That written draft document exists to this day. As a promising young player, he toured England with the West Indies schoolboys team in 1967, and his incredible performances during this led to him securing English contracts, but later on, actually... But his rise to prominence surfaced when he scored a brilliant 150 in 1969-70 against the Australian schoolboys team with an array of stroke play never seen before from a 17-year-old against a formidable team that included three players who went on to represent Australia. This early success against the Australians was only the beginning of things to come. Um, as he continued to display an insatiable appetite for Australian bowling and by the end of his career achieved the milestone in having one of the top test averages in history against Australia. Second only to the great Clyde Walcott. A couple of years later he made his debut for Trinidad and Tobago against New Zealand in 1972 teaming up with his brother Sheldon who had made the squad three years earlier. He joined England's Middlesex country staff shortly thereafter, county staff, sorry, shortly thereafter, and continued to work and build on his game, a trait he was well known for. 
Due in part to his familiarity with English conditions, he earned, he earned a place in the West Windies squad to England in 1976. That same year, he left Middlesex to join the Nelson Club in the War Lancashire League, where he had two very productive years, scoring over 2,000 runs, surpassing Sir Larry Constantine's seasonal aggregate in his first season. Surrounded by huge stroke makers when he established himself, himself in the West Indies team, he was the calm left-handed figure at the centre who many a time held the batting together. Best described as a pillar of re reliability, Mr. Dependable, even from his Trinidad and Tobago youth team days, elegant, fluent and efficient, even dubbed a carpet bagger, given his ability to keep it on the ground, he also had the ability to strike the ball fiercely, but stifled this in keeping with his attributes as a steady builder of runs, capable of staying at the crease for, the, for long periods of time. He attributes his change of style as necessary after he inherited the captaincy of the Trinidad and Tobago team following the retirement of several key batsmen as the team subsequently struggled to make big scores or stay at the crease for long periods. He took it upon himself to lead by example, and in so doing, the West Indies team benefited from a player already desi designed to accept such a role. One of his most memorable innings for the West Indies was at the Queen's Park Oval in March 1983, when Gomes scored 123 in seven and a half hours compared with Clive Lloyd's 143 in five hours coming together at the wicket with the West Indies floundering at three down for just one run. Greenwich, Haynes and Richards gone with Logie, Dujon, Marshall, Garner, Holding and Roberts to come. Imagine that team, eh? This partnership in fact equaled England's 1930 record for the fourth wicket of 237, Hendron and the Ames ever played at the Queen's Park Oval. Another example of keeping it together was at Perth in November 1984, when along with Dujon, 139 in a seventh wicket partnership, he scored 127 with the West Indies tottering after a feeble start. The West Indies won convincingly with Holden, Marshall and Garner doing the damage with the ball. Indeed, those were the days. And of course, there is that famous innings of 92 not out in partnership with Greenwich, who scored 240 not out at Lords in June 1984, the West Indies winning that test on the final day of the match. It was a record second wicket partnership of 287 in 236 minutes. This was a remarkable achievement as England's captain David Gower actually declared his second innings, thinking the target was impossible in the allotted time. It remains one of one of Larry's favorite innings, although he didn't get his maiden century at Lords, but he maintains winning the game was more important. His most enjoyable innings was one played with the West in, during the West Indies tour to India when the team was captained by Alvin Kalicharan. With wickets falling all around him, he went on to score 95 out of a total of 155 but during this innings reverted to his earlier batting style of his younger years when he went for his shots. Probably the best highlight of his career was his amazing statistics on the West Indies Tour of Australia in 1981-1982. In three tests, the then 28-year-old was the only Windies batsman to score a century and he did it twice at Sydney and at Adelaide. His 55 in the first innings at Melbourne was the top score, ending the series with an average of 78.6 compared to the second batsman, Clive Lloyd, at 55.0, and with an aggregate of 118 18 more than his captain Lloyd. Is it any wonder his favorite grounds besides Sabina Park and Queen's Park Oval are those in Australia, especially Adelaide? 
Gomes went on to play 60 test matches for the West Indies, scoring 3,171 runs at an average of 39.63. In 83 ODIs, he amassed 1,415 runs at an average of 28.87. Gomes also bowled ambidextrously, right-handed, both medium and off-spin. He opened the bowling for Trinidad and Tobago on many occasions and bowled at both the Test and ODI levels, taking a total of 56 international wickets. He accumulated 12,982 first-class runs at an average of 40.56 and also claimed 107 first-class wickets. Gomes represented the West Indies in a total of 100, 143 international matches and was part of the West Indies team that reached the World Cup final in 1983. He amassed a total of 10 centuries for the West Indies, 9 in tests and 1 ODI, with 6 of those coming against the Aussies. His highest score of 143 against England at Edgbaston in June 1984 in an innings victory for West Indies. He was named a Wisden Cricketer of the Year in 1985. He was among 50 players and administrators honored by the Trinidad and Tobago Cricket Board for their contribution to the development of the sport over the past 50 years at a gala function at the Crown Plaza Hotel on 29th of September 2012 in celebration of Trinidad and Tobago's 50th anniversary of independence. His first class span uh, was from 1971-1972 to 1987-1988. His test debut was against England at Nottingham in June 1976, while his last test was against New Zealand at Christchurch in March 1987. He made his ODI debut versus Australia at Castries in April 1978 and played his last ODI against, again against Australia at Sydney in February 1987. Gomes has coached the Trinidad and Tobago senior team, the West Indies Youth World Cup team, and has also had coaching stints in Australia Canada and the USA where he has played where he also played. Gomes is an avid horse racing fan. Well folks, that brings us to an end of another edition of Legends of West News Cricket. We hope you found it enjoyable and will join us next week when we look at the career of Gordon Greenwich. Until then